dear students i welcome you for the today's lecture sir we are going to discuss related to the general heat conduction equation the basic terminology related to the general heat conduction equation then from general heat conduction how we can achieve the laplace equation the fourier equation poisson equation and we are going to consider uh, this uh, general equation in all the three cartesian systems also that is uh, all the three systems that is cartesian coordinate system uh, cylindrical coordinate system as well as the spherical coordinate system so this is the uh, general idea related to the today's lecture now when we consider the general heat conduction equation then we have to consider the balances over the certain volume element now this is the volume element which we have to consider in general a small volume element that is to be taken into account for consideration having the heat q that is entering into the system entering into this volume element this is the qx that is the volume uh, the amount of the heat entering into the volume element and qx plus dx this is the heat leaving out from the volume element in the x direction then what can be considered as the balance as you have already studied the fluid mechanics as you have already discussed the fluid mechanics uh, in that also we have uh, taken into consideration the basic uh, uh, volume element and uh, the in this case the amount of heat that is entering and leaving out the system that is to be of our concern so the net heat conducted into the element in dx dy or dz for unit time that is the net heat conducted into the element now for this net heat conducted into the element that can be the heat rate of heat conduction at x minus the rate of heat conduction at x plus delta x that means as we have taken into account the rate of heat conduction into the x plane minus the rate of heat conduction out from this x plane so this is the rate of heat conduction at x minus the rate of heat conduction at x plus delta x so this is nothing but the net heat conduction into the element in the dx direction in the dx direction now in addition to that the internal heat generation for unit time internal heat generation whatever the heat generation that can be there in this volume element that can be taken into the account this is the uh, q g e n q generation is taken as the amount of the heat generated into the volume element here also the rate of heat generation inside the element that is also called and that will be equals to the increase in the internal energy for unit time increase in the internal energy for unit time so this is the amount of heat that is within this system it is also called the rate of change of internal energy of a differential element rate of change of internal energy of the differential element that is nothing but 
this increase in the internal energy increase in internal energy that means the rate of change of internal energy and the remaining term is the work done by the element for the unit time so all these are the four terms which can be taken into account for general heat conduction input minus output that is the rate of heat conduction as x minus the rate of heat conduction as x plus delta x that is nothing but include input minus output plus the generation of heat plus the generation input minus output plus generation which is equal to rate of change of internal energy plus the work done by that element so this is our basic heat conduction equation this is our basic balance over the system now similar balances that has to be taken into the fluid mechanics as well as similar balances that are to be taken into the mass transfer also amount of heat in this case it is the heat conducted in mass transfer amount of mass entering into the system net amount of the mass entering into the system net amount of the heat conducted that means the heat into the system minus the heat out of the system that is nothing but the net input minus output that is net so net heat conducted into the system plus the heat generated for the unit time which is equal to the increase in the internal energy or you can say the rate of change of internal energy plus the work done so this is our basic general heat conduction equation now how that will be applicable for our base uh, control volume this control volume taken into account the heat changes fluid mechanics mein fluid changes material kitna aa raha hai kitne density ka aa raha hai that we have taken into account now in this case it is the heat that is to be taken into account heat entering into the x direction heat going out in the x plus delta x similarly what is the heat generation that is there so now what is the uh, heat entering into the system qx which is equal to ka delta t by delta x from the fourier law of heat conduction this is the amount of heat entering into the system that is qx which is equal to the minus k a into delta t by delta x now in this case uh, in this uh, x direction when we are taking the x direction it is the area which is perpendicular to the x direction when we are taking into account the flow in the x direction so that will be the perpendicular for the y direction and the z direction so ye x direction hai and so is your delta z and this is your delta y so ye delta y ho gaya ye delta z ho gaya and this is in the x direction so x direction ke vakt mera area kaun sa ho gaya y and z and y delta z and delta y so this is delta y into the delta z now the temperature gradient in the x direction delta t upon delta x similarly the amount of the heat leaving out from the system or from the volume element that is q of x plus dx so which is equal to qx plus delta qx upon delta x into the dx so it is what the differential delta by delta x of this qx 
ये क्यू एक्स हो गया दिस इज वॉट दी क्यू एक्स दैट विल बी देयर So this will be Q x plus delta by delta x of Q x into the dx. So this will be nothing but uh, Q x in the x direction, which is equal to the k a delta t by delta x into d y into the d k. Well, delta T by delta X is a temperature gradient. K is the thermal conductivity in the X direction. And Q X plus delta X, which is equal to Q X into delta by delta of Q X, delta by delta X of Q X into the dx. So Q X plus T here. Here. So minus k x into delta t by delta x into d by into the dz. So this is what the q x is. Is same k delta t by delta x into d by into the dz plus delta by delta x delta by delta x of q x. That is q x is k x. Into delta t by delta x into the t by into the dz. ये q x की value हो गई. q x की value यहाँ पे दिया हुआ है. Minus k x delta t by delta x into delta y by delta z. So we have substituted this delta by delta x of q x. So after subtracting the q x minus q x minus q x, why we have to subtract? Because of our basic equation, that is, rate of heat conduction in the x direction minus the rate of heat conducted at x plus delta x. That is what Q x minus Q of x plus delta x. So Q x minus Q x plus delta x. So ये term cancel हो जाएगी. और बचेगी ओनली डिस्टर्ब डेल्टा बाय डेल्टा एक्स ऑफ क्यू एक्स इनटू डी बी एक्स सो दिस इज इन दी एक्स डायरेक्शन व्हाट वी हैव टेकन इनटू अकाउंट बट व्हेन वी कंसीडर दी थ्री डायमेंशनल इक्वेशन देन वी हैव टू टेक इनटू अकाउंट दी नेट हिट कंडक्टेड इनटू दी एलिमेंट now net heat conducted into the element that will be in from all the three direction that is delta dx dy and dz so this is what we have to apply the heat conduction equation in the other three two directions also so qy minus q of y plus delta y which is equal to I can write k by delta t by delta y. In that case, the cross-sectional area will be delta x into delta z. Y direction में जब मैं consider करूँगा, तो my area will be x at dx into the dz. और जब z direction में मेरे को heat transfer consider करने का है, तो z डायरेक्शन में मेरे को कंसीडर करने का है तो y एज वेल एज डी एक्स डायरेक्शन सो डी एक्स इन टू दी डी वाई दैट इज टू बी टेकन फॉर दी हीट चेंज बिकॉज दिस इज दी परपेंडिकुलर एरिया परपेंडिकुलर एरिया हैज टू बी टेकन हीट ट्रांसफर जिस डायरेक्शन से हो रहा है उसके परपेंडिकुलर एरिया को कंसिडर करना पड़ेगा मेरे को So finally, writing the changes in the x, y, and z direction, I can write delta by delta x. Three no equations to combine. करने के बाद delta by delta x of k x into delta t by delta x plus uh, delta by delta y k y 
delta t by delta y plus the third term that is the delta z term, delta y delta z, k z, delta t by delta z into the dx, dy and dz, which is a common way that has been taken out. So this is the first term that is the net heat change. Input minus the output in x direction, input minus output in the y direction, input minus output in the z direction. So ye tino directions ka account karke the first term that will be there. What is my first term? That is the net heat conducted into the element in dx, dy, dz direction for the time. So this is the first term that has been taken into account. Then the second term that is the internal heat generation for the time. Now what is the internal heat generation that will be there? Q we have taken as the heat generation, Q dot is taken as the heat generation term. So Q dot into dx into dy into the dz, that is the second term that will be there. So the, then the third term, that is the change in the internal energy for the element over a period of time dt. So internal energy may kya changes are hai that has to be studied. That is nothing but the rate of change of internal energy of that differential volume element. That is nothing but the change of internal energy for the element. Us element may internal energy may kya changes ho rahe hai. That is to be calculated. That is nothing but, so first is your MCP delta T. MCP delta T, kya ho gaya? M is your mass. Mass is, uh, I can write the density for that. Mass is in units, kgs mein hai, aur ye kg, uh, kgs per meter cube mein ho gaya aapka, into the volume. So this is the density rho which is having the unit of kg per meter cube and uh, dx, dy and dz that is nothing but the volume. So it is the unit of these bracket, first bracket will be having the unit of mass only that is the kg. This is the cp and the dt and cp dt. So I can write rho cp dt into the volume so where rho and cp are the densities and the specific heat of the material then the rate of change of the internal energy this is the mcp delta t is the internal energy mcp delta t is the internal energy so rate of change of internal energy ke liye mein ko kya karna padega divided it by the time rate jab a gaya tab time ka factor a jayega so internal energy jo kuch hai divided by the delta t so internal energy from this equation rho cp dt into the volume divided by the delta t so yahan pe delta t by delta x ye dusri term a gayi temperature is a function of time So this is the third term that will be there. Now the fourth term that is related to the work done. In this case there is no work done. So for fourth term that becomes equal to the zero. So we can only consider the three terms. That is the net heat conducted into the element. This is nothing but the heat, uh, rate of heat conduction in the x direction in the y direction and in the z direction minus the rate of heat conduction out at x plus delta x, y plus delta y, z plus delta z plus the rate of heat generation inside the element that is what 
the amount of the heat generated per unit volume, which is equal to the rate of change of energy content of the element. This is nothing but the increase in the internal energy or the rate of change of internal energy you can say. So, ye tino terms we have calculated the fourth term, the net heat change, the second term, the heat generation term, the third term, the change of internal energy term. And the fourth term work done that is taken as zero. So, arranging all these three terms, that is the first term from here, delta by delta x of k is delta t by delta x plus the y direction term that is delta by delta y of k by delta t by delta y plus the z direction term, z direction ka heat loss jo bhi kuch hai net change that is delta by delta z of kz delta t by delta z into the volume. So, this is the First term, the second term is the Q dot heat generation and the third term rho Cp delta T by delta T. And you are cancelling dx, dy, dz that is the volume from all the three terms. So, this is the simplification of the equation of heat conduction. Now, Kx Ky and Kz, we are considering the same material. So, the thermal conductivity in uh, all the three directions, that is the same. And that can be replaced with the K only. So, three dimensional heat conduction equation, that is, I can write delta by delta x of K, delta T by delta x plus delta by delta y of K, delta T by delta y. And in the z direction, q dot is the heat generation, rho cp delta t by delta t. Now, this can be simplified by taking the k as the common and I can write delta square t by delta x square plus delta square t by delta y square plus delta square t by delta z square plus the heat generation term which is equal to rho Cp delta T by delta T, which is equal to rho Cp delta T by delta T. Now, as this is the heat diffusion equation, this is containing the three terms, that is the diffusion term is nothing but delta square T upon delta X square plus delta square T upon delta Y square plus delta square T upon delta Z square. This is the diffusion term. So, in diffusion term, ko I can write the Laplace transform delta square T. Means the change, differential change in all the three directions. That is, this delta square upon T. Capital delta, you can write. So, this is K multiplied by delta square T plus Q dot that is the generation term. So, this is what is the general heat conduction equation. This is incorporating the three terms that is the diffusion term, the heat generation term and the unsteady state term that is delta T upon delta T. That is the rate of change of internal energy. This is the unsteady state term. Rate of change of internal energy is nothing but the unsteady state term is there. Then this equation governs the Cartesian coordinate system temperature distribution for three dimensional unsteady state heat transfer. Now, one by one, we can uh, take into account the different conditions for that. Uh, now, this is the three dimensional we have discussed. 
if you want to write it in the one direction, this equation, uh, two dimensions, it becomes delta square t upon delta x square plus delta square t upon delta y square. Plus you can add the degeneration term as well as the unsteady state term. Unsteady state term is nothing but the rate of change of internal energy term. And uh, all these uh, three equations, they can be solved either numerically, graphically or analytically. So this is what the development of a differential equation by considering the basic balances, basic laws, whatever we have studied. Those laws we have, that is why we have spent few classes related to that, based on conduction, kya hai, temperature, kya hai, thermodynamics, kya hai. all this we have studied to understand the basic concept. Now we are applying this basic concept basic laws, basic definitions, and we are developing this general heat transfer or heat conduction equation. Or ye generalized heat conduction equation ka fir ko analysis karne ka hai. That will be there with the application part. So science is, that is your basic law, development of the model or development of a basic equation, and then we are applying it for the different conditions or different situations which is going to give me the different numerical problems. So we have to solve these differential equations that is by numerical finite difference or finite element schemes usually we will solve using the computer. Complicated problems can make a All three dimensional, all the three terms. Uh, then the graphical method. That is the limited use, however, the conduction state factor, this concept derived under this uh, concept can be useful for specific configuration. And then the analytical methods are there. That is the mathematical equation can be solved using the technique like the method of separation of variables. But uh, the numerical methods which are very common, <coughs> So finite difference element or finite volume method, they are uh, used for uh, solving the differential equation. Now this is what we have considered it in the Cartesian coordinate system. That is the Cartesian coordinate system that is in the x, y and z direction, delta by delta x of k delta t by delta x plus delta by delta y of k delta t by delta y plus delta by delta z of k delta t by delta z. Now what this delta t by delta z is the change in temperature in the x direction or change in temperature in the y direction or the change in temperature in the z direction and well, delta t by delta t is nothing but the change in temperature with respect to the time. This is the change in temperature with respect to time is nothing but the rate of change of internal energy term. That is nothing but the unsteady state term. Temperature ke, uh, time ke saath saath temperature change ho raha hai. That is unsteady. Ek steady state hai ki kab hai ki? Jab temperature change nahi ho ka. Time ke saath. Equilibrium maintained. Ho Equilibrium maintained. Ho gaya, that means there is no change in temperature with respect to time. That is what we have achieved the steady state. Equilibrium state. Are there. As we have derived this in the x, y, and z coordinate system, similarly we can derive it in, in the cylindrical coordinate system by taking r, phi, and z. Also, we can derive it for the spherical coordinate system R, theta, and phi. So, these are, uh, these are your uh, basic uh, equations in cylindrical coordinate system and spherical coordinate system. So, there are equations that also we, we, we can see. So this is the 
situation in the cylindrical coordinate system uh, r theta and z direction uh, the r q r t entering in the r direction z direction for the cylinder and the y direction for the same cylinder so we can take into account the q r into the minus k delta t by delta r into r d phi into the dz now the area change to y d phi into dz instead of dy into dz similarly q r plus delta r that will also be there Heat going out from that falling element is nothing but q r plus delta r so the net rate of heat entering into the volume element that is q r minus q r plus delta r which is equal to q r q r ye sum cancel ho jayegi with this and the remaining sum will be only delta q upon delta r into the delta r so is ko delta by delta r of this is nothing but the q r to instead of dr multiplication it is the d phi into the dz so simplification we will get the net rate of change into the volume element similarly in the square direction and in the z direction you will have the two equations corresponding to that so the third term that is incorporating will be in the r theta and z direction the second term and the third term will be the same the generation term and the change of the internal energy term so finally we can go into the general heat conduction equation in the cylindrical coordinate system similarly we can have the cylindrical coordinate system also there also we can derive the this general heat conduction equation this is uh, in the cylindrical coordinate system r theta and psi direction so you can have finally the three dimensional equation in cylindrical coordinate system so this is the development of general heat conduction equation in the three coordinate system no we can have the different condition based on the different situation so we are having the three term that is the one is the diffusion term the heat generation term and the last term is the unsteady state term so by considering all these three terms we can simplify this equation to obtain the laplace equation to obtain the fourier equation and to obtain the poisson equation is it a manipulation changes sir so the steady state term that means delta by delta t which is equal to zero so looking at this uh, equation the general heat conduction equation that is uh, no delta square t upon delta x square plus the heat generation plus the unsteady state term ये तीन टर्म से ही वी कैन मैनिपुलेट हियर इट इज रिटर्न ओनली इन एक्स डायरेक्शन वन डायरेक्शन इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग इट इन द थ्री डायरेक्शन 
So similarly, you can write delta square t upon delta y square plus delta square t upon delta z square. So in the zero direction, then you can write it. delta square t by delta x square for x direction only for delta square. A you have to write how much. That is delta square t by delta x square plus delta square t by delta y square plus delta square t by delta z square. So all these three directions that have been taken into account here. So one by one, first we will say the steady state. Steady state is change in temperature with respect to time that will be equal to t. So I can make this uh, change in state uh, steady uh, temperature with respect to time that term is zero. So only the remaining term is two term that is the first is the diffusion term and the second is the heat generation. E G E N is nothing but E Q G E N that is the heat generation term. Generation G E N is the generation term upon the K thermal conductivity, which becomes equal to the zero. ये इक्वेशन को के आई हैव टेकन इट ऑन दिस साइड इट बिकम्स क्यू डॉट अपॉन के एंड रो सीपी अपॉन के रो सीपी अपॉन के इज नथिंग बट थर्मल डिफ्यूजिविटी के अपॉन रो सीपी व्हाट वी आर स्टडीइंग इन द मॉर्निंग के अपॉन रो सीपी दैट इज द हीट कंडक्शन इट्स अ रेशियो ऑफ हीट कंडक्शन अपॉन द हीट कैपेसिटी रेशियो ऑफ हीट कंडक्शन अपॉन द हीट कैपेसिटी इज द थर्मल डिफ्यूजिविटी So this is written as uh, one upon alpha delta t upon delta t. So this is the transient or no heat conduction, no heat generation first. No heat generation is the Q G or E G that is equal to zero. So this second term that becomes equal to zero. So remaining term is delta square t upon delta x, which is equal to one upon alpha delta t upon delta t. ये हीट ट्रांजिएंट नो हीट जनरेशन टर्म आ गई देन द स्टेडी स्टेट एंड नो हीट जनरेशन दोनों चीजें अप्लाई कर दिया स्टेडी स्टेट भी है वो एज वेल एज द हीट जनरेशन भी है सो ओनली रिमेनिंग इज डेल्टा स्क्वायर टी अपॉन डेल्टा एक्स स्क्वायर डेल्टा स्क्वायर टी अपॉन डेल्टा एक्स स्क्वायर व्हिच इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो दीस आर द थ्री कंडीशंस that will be taken into account one is the steady state condition no uh, heat generation term and the diffusion term so tino term ka manipulation apne ko karne ka hai now when it's a steady state first condition the delta t upon delta t is equal to t the terms involved in the diffusion and generation term that is called the poisson situation That is called the Poisson equation. That is at a steady state. Steady state का जो equation बनेगा वो Poisson equations के नाम से कहलाएगा. Then the transient or no heat generation. So heat generation नहीं है. So बची हुई कौन सी है? Diffusion term and the unsteady state term. So that is called a diffusion equation. This is called a diffusion equation. This diffusion equation that is also called as a Fourier equation. For it, here is also given this equation that is the diffusion equation or the Fourier equation, the same equation is there, which is incorporating the diffusion term and the unsteady state term. And the third is the Laplace equation. Laplace equation that incorporates the third condition, that is the steady state condition being there, or heat generation is the condition, no heat generation. So this is the Laplace equation. Only equation is delta square t upon delta x square plus delta square t upon delta y square plus delta square t upon delta z square is equal to zero. So that is what it is written in terms of a Laplace transform. Also, this is what we can write it in terms of the Laplace transform. This is the delta square t is nothing but this bracket is the Laplace a transform. Delta square t upon delta x square plus delta two uh, t upon delta y square plus delta square t upon delta z square. This is Laplace transform square upon t, and that is why it is called the Laplace equation. So you are getting the Poisson equation, diffusion equation, or the Fourier equation, and the Laplace equation. The three equations that will be there. 
then similarly also you can apply it with all the three conditions that is steady state condition, no heat generation condition, and the, both the condition of steady state and no heat generation in the cylindrical system as well as in the spherical coordinate system also. 